Hey Nuggies, get comfortable. It's dream story time. So, I had a dream this morning about being out with, it felt like a group of girls. There were definitely, you know, more than two people in this little group of people that I was walking around with. But mainly, there was one female that I was closer to, who is significantly shorter than me and it's not that she was shorter than me it's just that she felt smaller than me in the dream okay so it's just like shorter than me but i've had friends who are shorter than me but that's really hard to achieve as a thing because i'm already quite short and um i just remember us walking along what could have been listen this could have been in any you know nice neighborhood or on a school campus or walking alongside a park where there are those long wispy plants you know neatly planted and there's a little cement walkway through and we're passing there this group of people and i and the vibe is kind of good everybody's laughing we're on our way somewhere and out of nowhere the short female says to me oh my god you should take that off and I'm like, what? And she's like, your necklace. And I'm like, what? And automatically in the dream, I couldn't even remember what necklace I was wearing. And this does happen to me often. I don't remember what ring I'm wearing or necklace. I change them frequently. So I was like, what am I wearing that she's reacting like that? And then I say, no, I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure of what I put on today. And I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, let's just go. And it's like, no, 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 you should really take it off parce que c'est vraiment laid, she says, in French. I have never dreamt in French in my life. And that's why I need today I needed to talk to you about this because I've never had a French dream before. And uh, c'est vraiment laid means it's really ugly. And now I'm like, damn, what am I wearing? And I thought quickly because I remember I felt like we were walking past the church. It felt like we were walking past a church. That's why I'm saying this could be a neighborhood or a campus, you know, because a lot of school campuses, they have, um, uh, they do have like religious buildings sometimes around them. It was like that at my university. So I was like, um, am I wearing my rosary? And I just remember being in a green shirt. Now, the only green shirt I own that looks like the shirt in the dream because though there are some details of this dream that make it feel like oh it was happening to me this has never happened to me and probably never will um not in this specific way you know what i mean so this is it's a prophetic message with symbolism that we're going to go through together so me being in a green shirt heart chakra energy right um and i remember it was a shirt that looks like the shirt that i have that has a big alien face on it so if you want to dig a bit into that, in that moment, that person made me feel like some alien on the sidewalk, you know, for just wearing whatever adornments I had chosen for my outfit that day. And I now am curious about what am I wearing that's so jarring and offensive and they're getting anxious about me wearing this necklace. It's a necklace. To wherever we're going because there's going to be family maybe there's going to be some relatives there's something about this person anticipating judgment on them because of what i'm doing like by association to me being afraid of what's going to happen to them so i'm like i look down and i expect to see myself wearing my green rosary but that's not what I was wearing. And I just remember there being like a black rope. So it was like a black necklace. Um, a black rope. This is where I knew I needed to talk about this dream more publicly because I don't wear any necklaces on the black rope. And the only necklaces I can think of that do come on black ropes are those evil eye necklaces that a lot of people are wearing now. And it's funny because those have been standing out to me in readings recently. I've been looking at people with their necklaces and everybody still has it on the original black rope that those 
evil eye pendants are typically sold with uh, right now online and I remember me as soon as I got mine I was so excited to change the chain like to change the rope I don't really well I mean I did wear it like that for a bit until it broke and I was expecting for it to break and it did break eventually and I had to put it on a different chain that's a little message for some people is you know the chains that we get bless your chain anoint your chains cleanse your chains this chain used to not belong to me there had to be cleansing done to it as it progressively became mine just like we do with our crystals just like we do with our home the way we nest in our home and it ends up smelling like us our little objects that we wear daily bless and protect um amen so in the dream i'm like am i wearing a rosary and remember it feels like i'm walking past a church too so there's like this heavy judgment on religion fear that i already had in that dream as a person i'm thinking oh i must be wearing the rosary and it's triggering them but no i look down and the dream kind of got blurry from there but i just remember looking down at my necklace and saying no like this is fine this is nice i'm gonna wear this and i just kind of went on like it's not a big deal like i didn't over question why did you think i would need to change that why are you saying that to me um nothing i just kind of went about my own thing but in that instant in that instance in that instance instantly let's say that person did manage to make me feel like an alien and then they did get me a bit anxious and then they had me putting my head down to check what i've done this is blocking your throat chakra and your higher heart chakra so there's a message here for some people that may have blockages in this part of their body because this person was staring here right here on my chest my sternum my neck they were staring with such intensity such anger almost at me and what it ultimately comes down to is that this is a message and a warning about people in your life who have a problem not with you but with how blessed and divinely protected you are there are some people because that dream I deduced that the fact that I deducted the fact that I deduced I think um, the fact that I saw the black rope okay evil eye I'm wearing an evil eye pendant you're scared I'm gonna wear this out at an event why would you be scared of that it's not even standing out. When I looked down, I didn't even see the evil eye. I just, you know, saw like my outfit. What are you freaking out about? Some people are so irritated by other people's gifts and blessings that they will unconsciously go after you for them. And they will try to make you feel odd for having what they wish they did. Let that sink in. A lot of people spend a lot of time trying to make you feel weird for what they wish that they could do and be. Let's just breathe into that for a minute. Let's just sink into that. Can you imagine that this is what's behind so much child abuse? This is what's behind those work microaggressions. This is what's behind bullying But when it comes to gifts and protection, I didn't choose how protected I was or not. And me wearing an amulet means I'm calling in protection. If any part of that makes you uncomfortable, then either the person who's made uncomfortable by you wanting to protect yourself is a toxic, garbage, dangerous person, or they're annoyed that you're doing the work and you're raising your vibration because it leaves an example of what they should be doing. And if they were doing that, they wouldn't be so bothered by you in the first place. Only shit disturbers are fucking bothered by other people just trying to live. Only shit disturbers don't know how to live and let live. Now what's great about shit is that it's manure. You can mix it up and it can become, it, it can make things fertile again. That's super, super, super exciting. 
but also fucking annoying. These kind of people, you're hella annoying. All your charm, all your grace, all your ideas, your will to help, the fact that you know what to do to help. No matter how fucking shittily some, pers some person tries to make you feel, anybody who expresses their opinion and points or concerns or questions and inquiries about or towards you in a manner of criticism, yelling, judgment, or being mean or violence is not right. That person's not right. En français, on dirait ils sont pas droits. I'm going to end this little video by, you know, why I do the work that I do. I love doing my makeup. I love getting dressed up. I will continue to try on clothes for y'all and do those hauls and put out reels. And I'm even back on TikTok. All that's going to keep happening. But it's so important for me to talk about these kind of things because just the fact that people try to chip away at you because you're protected, that alone speaks of how protected you are. Because there's clearly something around you to mine. Otherwise, they wouldn't be chipping at anything, would they? So they're chipping away at the gem that you are. Now, you be careful how you let people chip and mine away at you, though. And you realize that you can decide at any point, just like crystals, when they decide to break into or disappear, you can redistribute the little pieces and the shards that were dropped and that got left. You can pick them up and decide they come back here, they come back there, because they are of you. Therefore, you are source to them. Therefore, you are God to those parts. Go back through experiences where people try to degrade you, People make you feel stupid. People laugh at you. Oh, ho, ho! Where people laugh at you. And then they go and do what you do. Don't we love it? We fucking love it. It's so confusing, but oh, so interesting to see. Are you fucking serious? And if I'm talking to somebody right now, who you judge people a lot, even if you keep it in your mind. If you're very judgmental in your head, no matter how much you try, it's going to come out. You're going to say things. You're going to have like, facial expressions that you make. And you know what it's about? It's about you. The more disgusted I've ever behaved towards the outside environment, it's the more crummy I feel inside. I don't feel well. I feel sick. So vision is blurred. So you see things as shit. If you dip an antenna in shit and pull it out, it's now an antenna covered in shit. Who wants it? Nobody. Not even you. So don't shitty yourself. Don't shitty your vibe. Don't shitty your stuff by judging other people, by criticizing other people. And you watch yourself because often the things that were like, I would never. Or what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Let's see in five years from now. You'll probably be doing that thing. Do you know how many times it's happened to me? I don't like the saying never say never because it's like <laughs> paradoxical or an oxymoron. I don't know how to say it. But yeah, those vibes. It's very interesting to see how things are unfolding. Be nice. Be nice. Because you don't know. You don't know what's triggering you in another person. It might just have to do with something that bothers you about yourself. That's usually what it is. It's something that you've not mastered within yourself. It's something that you would like to do, but you don't have the balls to, or you don't know how you would do it. I'm thinking now, and this is my final point, we're going to end this. I'm just thinking about my narcissistic parent who has mocked me for wearing many crystals, uh, for wearing many necklaces at a time, and they're doing everything that they think I'm doing now. While I'm in no contact with them, 
they're modeling themselves off of what looks like my 20 year old version of me which was the version that got okay I'm um, trigger warning assault violence uh, I don't know how else to say it but the first time I wanted to shave my head um, and that I did was at a time where at school um, I don't know what was I I was 20 I was smoking weed um, I was getting decent grades I was fucking miserable at home there were a lot of fights my mom and my stepmom used to insult each other why don't you go kill yourself oh is it hard being prom queen oh is it hard being a fucking ugly bitch no 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 they used to yell at each other all the time and I remember at the end of like 2014 I just wanted to shave my head I just wanted to be bald so I did shave my head um progressively because my mom wouldn't let me cut my hair and at one point I did like a really extreme cut on myself because I wanted the hair gone I just kept making the hair go thinner and thinner and thinner and I remember one day I had shaved it down to this thing in the middle it looked like very intense um, and my mother was like, she looks like somebody who does crack. You know what you look like? You look like you're on harsh drugs. It's just making your face look like this. It's making this look like that. When I finally shaved off a bit more, I remember she was super anxious about life at that time. And she blamed it all on me. She said that her anxiety was about me. No, your anxiety, dear person, was about you being with a toxic, alcoholic, potential pedophile drug addict who drained you and I warned you they would and after a while of you consistently insulting me and choosing to go stick your face you know where in them I wished for you that you would just lose your shit go do it that's clearly what you're asking for I literally tried so hard to help my parent. I gave them so much advice. This person used to drain the fuck out of me. Call me, I'd be like, hey, I'm about to start working. They talked to me about three for three hours about nonsense. Nonsense relationships, nonsense people. This is the person who when they saw me with my shaved head and also I've grown up my whole childhood watching them do everything they want to their hair. Shaving it, bleaching it, and, and it's always, yeah, because I like it, it's just hair, I like it. Little did I know this narcissist had been lying to, my, to me and probably to themselves all those years. And they admitted to me later that every time they had shaved their head and done something drastic, usually had to do with a father wound and also just had to do with like just annoyance at their appearance or at something. It wasn't from love. So when I started shaving my head because I wanted to feel my scalp, I knew that I was going to go through intense awakening when I was 20. Big drama took fucking weeks to do. Finally, I get really close to doing it the way I want. And I'm out for a walk. And I wasn't allowed to go for walks anymore because people were scared that I was going to be on the marijuanas while I'm out on walks. Which, yeah, it did happen. Would you have preferred cigarettes? Oh, maybe I should have just been drinking publicly like my stepmom. Oh yeah okay so i'm out for this walk and uh, they come and pick me up in their car and hand to god my mother strangled me in the car my mother assaulted me so violently in the car i had a mark on my neck and i've been dealing with serious throat chakra issues um for years but that incident and now this person is going to be sharing their light and love with others it's so exciting. I do believe that everybody can turn over a new leaf, but there's a way of going about those things. And it's just very interesting that the person who had so many insults and comments about me, this is how it's turning out. So you fucking protect your divine self, believe in yourself, and you just keep going after the higher vibration, higher vibration, higher vibration. If there's anybody here who wanted to wear something more spiritual to an event where they're going soon and they're worried about who's going to receive it, how? Yo, do it. You're going to educate those people. And even if they make fun of you, I'm telling you, give them eight years. They'll be there trying to dress like you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Listen.
Anderson. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching take care of yourselves <laughs> and i'll see you in the next one uh in the next little um yeah i don't know what these are going to be called so we'll just see i'll see you in the next one take care and you can follow me on all my socials i am noxie ultimate on facebook instagram tiktok and twitter bye